today we're going to be talking about nodal perspective attunement so that we can see the patterns. What we're looking at is just another pattern that we don't have control over. Again, the no choice, no fault, no need for assigning blame or shame or guilt to you or to anyone else. This is just a pattern. Now, remember when we dive into rave psychology, when we're seeing the patterns, this is not who you are. This is your personality construct or you witnessing life, okay? This pattern right now that we're looking at is the way you're designed to filter or frame your seeing. It's just an aspect of this vehicle that we're riding in. It gives us our perspective, just like when you jump on a train and you go over this bridge, you get a specific perspective. You as a passenger jumped into this body and now you're getting this ride of your life. Okay, so it's not the to some totality, it's how you're designed to see. Now, strategy and authority shocks our vehicle into alignment. This is one of my students' drawings that he um, conveyed of what it felt like to have Pluto, you know, this rage inside, this death and dying and rebirth. And for me, you know, that deep transformation that Pluto can bring, if you've ever been through a Pluto transit, you know what I mean? That deep transformation takes this, this knot, this chaos that's inside of your head and with a guide or human design professional you can start to unravel some of those knots by giving them the tool of strategy and authority so our strategy and authority is amazing it aligns us to the right frequencies that's all we are all composed of frequencies we have receptors that are open to being conditioned and when we're resonating in alignment with what's right for us, how we're aligned to see, we're going to resonate to what's good for us. And in that way, we get into alignment. So it always comes back to strategy and authority. Now, in our current society, we are so bombarded by all of this misinformation, people speaking fantasy as if it were fact, and using all of the news, the media, the movies, everything to condition us to see things in a particular way, to see their morals, to see their judgments, to see their truths as if it was our truth. Now, remember, we are wolves, not sheep. You do not have to see what other people see. You do not have to see in the way they tell you you have to see. You see the way you're designed to see, and that's what the purpose of this information is for you to align with. Not that you're going to try and superimpose this. Don't try. Don't force. Don't push. But just naturally gazing, either your soft gaze, if you are a right variable perspective, or your specific focused gaze, if you are a left variable perspective. Okay, this is really, really profound, even though it may sound simple. Example, there's a storyline in your life, not only about the nodes, but you also have your values and relating that become part of your law. And if you don't obey your own law, you become punished by Saturn, Saturn disciplining you, keeping you on the straight and narrow path of your life. It's not a bad thing. It's your story. Nobody can force you to see your story differently than how you're designed to see. But most human beings are constantly being told to see things. No, don't look at it like that. Look at it like this. This is a better way. This is more optimistic, you know, instead of seeing it for what it is and resigning yourself, not as in downtrodden, but as in, oh, well, oh, well. This is the unique way that we're here to see. You do not have to condition yourself away from your truth. Stand up for your truth. There is nothing to do but see. And seeing is the greatest reward because it's not about being in a hurry. It's not about having to hold on to. It's not about having to prove. It's not about the way anyone else climbs up that mountain of their life. It's about how you witness you in the experience of you in your life, see it, just see it, just witness it. You know, the more that you touch into the deep realms of your passenger consciousness, the more quiet everything becomes with regards to your mind, not trying to force or push or tell you do this because if you do this, you're going to get that and they'll think this about you and blah, 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 blah. That kind of thing starts to go away. Okay, so it's quiet and still 
without that yammering of the conditioning from the outside world. So the more that you come home to yourself and align with your truth, the more integrity of being you have to offer to another, the unique outer authority, the enlightenment of the passenger consciousness for a nine-centered being is our differentiated perspective and perspective. Again, this is what we're at, seeing perspective is the whole trip. It's the movie. When you are living in alignment, your life is clean. You live it as yourself. You breathe into the life. You breathe into yourself and it expands out into the world. And there's nothing to do but witness and watch and watch as life lives through you rather than you trying to attempt to control, manipulate, judge, second guess you and your outer authority. It's a huge shift. And I look forward to keep on watching you making that shift. Now, life itself is here in the nodes. Ra would call it the cross of life. In the mandala wheel, if you go to my body graph and you open up your mandala wheel view, if you just cut everything out, you'll see your incarnation cross makes an actual literal cross like that. But the nodes themselves, because they move so slowly in lockstep, they're always going to make a cross like this. Okay. So that, that cross is a little bit more like an X rather than a T. The life itself is lived here in the nodes. This is where it's a we. Remember, this is the I, the incarnation cross. <laughs> and here's where we have the we. So we're going to continue on with looking at everything about our lives, what we make of our lives is filtered through what we see. This is what our lives are about, the framing of our view. Every one of us has a way of interpreting life differently. Here in the nodes, it's not just something that can be discarded. It's really the most foundational basis of your mind. It's the thing I love so much about ray of psychology is that we can see how your mind is designed to see and what you're designed to be distracted about. So today, when we talk about your charts, I want to hear from you what you notice, what you see, so that you're filtering, you're digesting, you're playing with how you see what you see, the back and forth, not that it's good, bad, right, or wrong to be in this versus that, but that you align yourself with recognizing when you are in the this versus the that, and that you're witnessing the drama. What you see is more important than the way you conceptualize it. So this is even more important than your motivational frequency that we're going to talk about next time we meet. What you see is everything, he says. It's exactly what you're here for. This important of seeing correctly is because the unique way the body aligns us to our whole visual process enhances the possibility of our expression of enlightenment. Nine-centered enlightenment is, again, outer authority. So I really want to drive this one home, deconstructing the nodal construct that each of you have and giving us time to discuss and talk about it. Because your mind is structured, the way that it thinks is rooted in view. It's so obvious when your view is distracted. Let's say there's a this versus a that. Yeah. Over here, we have the way that you're thinking within the box because it literally looks like a box. It's the same object because everything is frequency. What you're seeing is filtered through the framing of your mind and its construct. So let's just call this, not this good, bad, right, wrong. Let's just call this the transference, the this. Okay. And on this side, we see a that. Okay. My point is not to get you enthralled in either this or that. I want you to watch back and forth. Absolutely. But not to try and make, let's say this is the perspective that is correct. Your, your correct viewpoint. I don't want you to try and force yourself. Oh, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. Try to go over here. Okay. That's again, the manipulation, the distortion of the mind trying to be in charge instead of dancing back and forth in trying to force the energy over here. What I would like to invite you to do is take a deep breath, stand back and touch in with the passenger consciousness that is actually witnessing both. Because when you're watching the this and that, ask yourself the question again, who's watching? 
it's a very different thing that will bring you to this versus that when you are not trying to control or force or push, when you are simply allowing breathing and being, it's a different chemistry, a different frequency. And our perspective is the foundation for understanding human psychology. This is the basis of which, you know, when you're tonal pulled right versus pulled left, I, we cannot help but either be focused. Hi, I'm focused over here. My focus is like, I'm looking at that thing, whatever my focus is drawn to. And I have another screen over here on the right hand side. If you guys started chatting, because I'm so focused on what I'm looking at, I would not see what's going on over there. However, those of you who are right peripheral view, my husband is like this, he can see all around him. It's uncanny. He's got a wanting perspective and he can just see. He can feel into that awareness. And it's very, very, very perceptive broadly, not specifically. So again, remember, those are the big picture view, the specific focus that is correct for you if you're focused like me, or the wide peripheral soft gaze that's taking everything in, in that framework of your view, if you're right, okay? The design side puts enormous pressure. It is our north node. Puts enormous pressure on our perspective, because those are the link nodes to south node, to see correctly. When your body is not operating in alignment, the frequencies are not held together correctly, and then we have dissonance, we have static on this line between body and mind. And then the spirit that is created, the juxtaposition of the two is off track. Spirit being alignment with success, the sweetness of success, or the surprise in life, or your satisfaction, or your peace. When it's off kilter, we know the terms frustration, bitterness, anger, disappointment. That spirit of you is being held together by correct aligned frequency. To go back to why I reminded us all of that concept, you cannot force from the mind to go there. It's false. It's not correct. So a continuing your journey of surrendering to the truth that is inherent within you. So that this foundation of the way that you conceptualize has a solid basis so that when we get to your motivational frequency, the way that your mind is designed to think, it has its grounding, we could say solidity foundation. Your distraction that you have experimented with is the signpost. And those are the stories I want to hear from you in alignment with the line value I'm going to give you because this is an incredible signpost. Remember, it was this versus that, right? So it's something to watch. It doesn't rob you of your perspective. It's still your perspective, okay? So it's not transference, like when we get to mental constructs over there, it's distraction. Catching the distraction by observing it, the more you're aware of this, the more you're gonna see it, the more you're going to be able to align yourself to coming back to remembering. It's just like another trigger, just like frustration is a trigger to remind yourself, what am I responding to? Do I have something to respond to here? Am I following my emotional clarity? The alignment with truth helps you come home to yourself and we just go, oh, decision-making strategy when you find yourself in distraction. What is my decision-making strategy for a splenic projector? Is this safe? Is it healthy? Am I secure? Does this person see me for who I am and what I can advise them to, not what I can do for them? Just some simple examples. Now, one of the things I want to ask you when you come to your sharing time with me, did the distraction point out to you when you were in the wrong environment? Because that's what Ross says it can do. Distraction can actually point out when you're in the wrong environment because automatically you're going to be distracted when you're not in the right environment. This distraction is really something. So especially, I mean, place is important for everybody. Everybody gets disturbed by being in the wrong place. But especially those of you with the undefined G, did the distraction point out when you were in the wrong environment? My question to you, okay? Now the view, again, the most essential ingredient for you as a witness of this life. It establishes the way it makes it possible for us to awaken, 
to the truth of ourselves. So if enlightenment is something that is really important to you with this construct of being uniquely yourself, watch for the viewpoint, watch it vacillate. Where do you look? Do you close your eyes? What do you see? When you're looking, there is this perspective that aligns to your environment. So remember, strategy and authority. So it's something important to understand that looking for the distraction is very powerful because it's not just affecting your personality external. It's exerting a force or an influence on your design, on your body. Catching it is a good thing. Basically, what you're doing is you're beginning to find your environment, your attunement to the environment. And the right environment heals you because of that. Then the distraction isn't environmental. The distraction when it arises is simply the impact of somebody's aura, most particularly and especially on projectors because we are designed to be deeply influenced by auric beings. When you watch the distraction. Now, again, the most important thing this is a really huge point that I want to get across that takes, I know it takes time to really sink in, especially for someone like me, what split with emotional authority projector, really deeply not self-conditioned in the beginning. But the biggest shift I can tell you from experience between me 10 years ago and me now is instead of the mind inside of the head trying to tell me what to do in order to get something from someone. So aware of this. So how can I use this to my advantage to leverage the advantage so that I personally have what I need in this life? Okay. Awareness itself is not agendized. It has no agenda. So when you're just watching your place in the movie, the vacillation back and forth, this is not about seven centered homogenized detached from what you're saying. No, it's not. Okay. Don't get confused about this. This is not about trying to withdraw yourself from life and detach from, you know, what you think you want. It's about not believing the mind in its enthrallment with its belief that it can control its mouth in order to get what it wants. It will always backfire. And then you ride the train down into bitterness, resentment, anger, frustration, disappointment. And if you watch that happen as you vacillate back and forth enough, finally, the mind says, fuck, I can't control this. I surrender. I give up. Come back home to the body. <laughs> if you can, I don't know if it's possible for everybody. Of course, human design is not for everybody. But if you can just watch it, it at least makes a difference in your process. Now, when you're watching, I do not want you to negate yourself and go, shit, I'm in distraction again. Damn it. Be yeah. Bad, not self-purpose. You know, don't get all downtrodden and go, oh, okay, interesting. Interesting. I'm watching that. I'm watching that. Come back out and zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. Who's watching? That's all I want you to do. No forcing. Okay. Every time your mind is in control of your life, that's your not able to be in alignment with awareness, alignment with passenger. You're just caught up in a mess a tangled web of lies that you cannot unravel. And it's so obvious. I can't tell you how obvious it is to watch somebody say a lie and then backtrack and try to, now it is anyway for me. I used to be so gullible and just believe whatever they say. But now I can, because my mind is stepped up a notch, my cognition has stepped up a notch. I can feel something incredibly uncomfortable in my body when somebody is lying. Everybody's going to have a different attunement. I'm feeling cognition. OK, so I, too, if my mind attempts to exert control and say, oh, you can't say that, don't tell the truth. What are they going to think of you? I start to feel uncomfortable in my body. So that's my signpost. Uncomfort, discomfort in my body says don't go there. And now it doesn't go there when I start to lie, whereas before immediately to the lie. Oh, I didn't do that. That wasn't my fault, says the third line who wants to hide and cover up the lies and the, the missteps and the false tees and the mistruths and the half truths cannot be authentic when you're living from the mind and its distortion because the distortion fogs up the windows of your view. All of the undefined centers have a lie that you're attaching to. I can't survive without this human being. I have to hold on to them without this job, without this place, without this thing. 
I have to hold on to them, even though they're beating me and they're not good for me. I have to hold on to them, says the mind. I've lived that movie, that lie. Now, the big shift that happens is instead of now you could shift it to the other. Oh, but if I go over to the that, then I'm going to be able to be safe and healthy. And it's still not about that. It's still not. It's about strategy and authority so that you don't get caught up in with the believing the I, which lies inside the head about the self, that it can get you out of any kind of kerfunkle <laughs> that you're in. So now it's not about, again, distraction being bad. Certain amount of distraction looking this way, it's actually a counterpoint to your view. If we were all always seeing in one direction, let's say for me, my example is I'm a personal perspective person. If I were always looking in the personal perspective direction, it would be very one tracked and would be very boring as a, as a passenger consciousness, as a witness. It wouldn't be as interesting. Looking in this direction towards power is a different viewpoint that pulls me out of my own personal thing, trip, whatever. It's just that when we make decisions because of the power, which is skewed for us personal people, we make decisions, mental decisions. Now we're fucked. It's still not about making mental decisions over here personally, but it is about recognizing the difference in frequency. The chemistry that arises is sweet instead of sour, sweet and sour. Distraction, again, the point being is that is a counterpoint so that we can have interesting, delicious binaries, the way Raw calls it, it's delicious binary, so that you're not trying to control your life all the time. Oh, this is going to happen. And the news says this, and this is, you know, what about the crashing of the dollar? And maybe if I do this, I'm going to get that and blah, 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 blah. That once you get your mind out of that inside of your life, trying to distort and control and manipulate, and you put your mind to good use, which is for projector looking out there. Now I'm a personal perspective projector, very different. I do have to look through my own personal framing in order to look, looking within in order to see everything that's out there. It's a very different kind of perspective. But this is a four-dimensional movie instead of the two-dimensional flat piece of paper that the mind thinks with, black and white. This is multicolored reality when you can allow yourself to not try to be in control with the mind. Don't try to push where your mind wants to take you. Because again, it, it is a pushing. It mind is an it. And when it pushes, you feel it. You feel it in your body as stress and pressure, fear, anxiety, emotional upset, pain in the stomach. You feel it as a kind of um, drop in the gut, a kind of withdrawing or contraction of the energy. This is not the, the bright light leading you forward. This is something that makes you shrink. This is something that anxietizes you. That leads you to try and pop pills in order to feel better. It leads you to try and take drugs. Watch the plug-in drug TV in order to try and feel better. Instead of looking at your movie, your life. Now, let's go meet your passengers. All you have to do is share your distraction. In that moment of distraction, the story that you're about to tell us, you have something to ponder for the rest of your life. Who watched? Can you be in touch with the all that isness that you are connected to in this frame? Yeah, the multidimensional you, this thing that existed before time was time. This is the passenger, the witness that eternally watches from this experiment of consciousness and form. <laughs>